Welcome to the Nuff Said Podcast. This is, we're going to call this Issue Zero. It's a Meet the Host episode. Since uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. hasn't uh, debuted yet, we're kind of in between Marvel movies, but uh, we just want to let the audience know who we are and get involved with you. How does that sound, Jack? Sounds good to me. You know what? I just introduced you, but we didn't introduce each other. <laughs> uh, so, your hosts for the show... I'm Rugged Rob Southgate, and you are? Sensationally Jack Wengroski. Oh, see, I was going to go with Jolly Jack Wengroski because that would be Jack Kirby. He's Jolly Jack Kirby. So. Jolly Jack. Well, I went with the Stan Lee uh, sensational. Sensational. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, this is a Marvel-centric podcast. We are uh, going to talk all things Marvel. It's a perfect time to launch something like this because Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is starting up September 24th on ABC. Coming soon. Tuesday nights, 7 Central. Jack, you're not Central. So what time is it for you? Uh, e- Eastern, so I'm an hour ahead. Okay, so you'll be... Well, we'll is it still 7 o'clock your time, or does it come on at 8 o'clock there? It'll be at 8 o'clock here. 7 eight o'clock. Central, 8 Eastern. Ah, got it. Okay. You can tell I really pay attention to that. <laughs> so... We should let people know who we are, just kind of lay the groundwork here. Uh, Jack, why don't you start? Why don't you tell us about yourself a little bit? Well, for the past 21 years, I've been a musician with the United States Army, playing trumpet, going all over the United States and to about 15 different countries. Sweet. I am retiring from active duty at the end of this month and was catching up with all my friends when I ran back uh, into you and decided uh, we should do some of these podcasts. Right now I'm uh, putting together some some teaching things, and over the years I've been definitely a Marvel and DC fan. I do not consider myself a subject matter expert. I will be probably more the, the, uh, the straight guy because I do mix hey, up the characters. That's the first time. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that's reverse discriminate no um but um uh, yeah it's like definitely have uh you know been into it uh for a long time well and you're like you're like into the movies and that right yeah yeah i've seen i've seen all the movies the avengers uh the um daredevil i did not see electra because i do have the comics and it did not look like it was going to match. It up. has nothing to do with those Frank Miller comics. Uh, it is. It does match up to the the uh, comic series, but it's god awful. So no, don't don't bother with that one. Although at some point during the course of this show, you probably are going to end up going back and checking it out, just because like, yeah, this is a hole in my knowledge. I'd want to check it out, but yeah, I mean, if I was going to go back and watch anything before we get this thing ramped up, it certainly wouldn't start with Electra. <laughs> that would that would be my recommendation. It didn't look uh it did not look authentic, but I will take your word for it that it goes more towards the the comic series. Yeah, you know what's funny is now most people don't like the Daredevil movie. You're going to get a lot of people groaning if I make a statement that I like it, I'm going to, you know, get emails and you know, tweets about, you know, what a jerk I am that I like that movie. But you know what? I actually didn't mind the movie, but I'll I'll tell you there's a couple of things that stood out for me with it. One is I did like Jennifer Garner as Electra. She was not the Electra I pictured. There's a, there are other actresses that would be more in line with that character, but I enjoyed that character in the movie. So I thought the second movie or the the standalone Electra movie was going to be good, and instead it was not at all. It was <laughs> it was awful. It was better than the Catwoman movie with Halle Berry, but that is such a low benchmark. <laughs> that, you know, I, I Any, at think, that point anything would have impressed you, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm almost thinking that the David Hasselhoff uh, Nick Fury movie is better than Electra. If that but tells it, you anything. Well, I hope it's it's got it's got anything has to be. Yeah. But but let's get back to Halle Berry in a Catwoman costume. Okay, now, wait a minute. I didn't say I didn't enjoy it. I, that's a movie. Here's how you, you gauge movies. Are they sound on, sound off? That is a sound off movie. Oh, absolutely. She is definitely eye candy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, it, it, she's great looking in that, but, man, 
what a train wreck. You can you if you're listening to it, if you're paying attention to the dialogue, it's so bad. <laughs> it's yeah. just terrible. Now I don't, I don't remember any of the dialogue. <laughs> you just remember the, the, I just remember the, the outfit. What a great pick. <laughs> For Catwoman, sorry. Uh, no, I agree. Well, it's I'm like, such a lech, but still, I mean, it was like Halle Berry in in black leather, or yeah. vinyl or pleather, whatever it was, but still, it was awesome. Well, I mean, let's go back even further. You had Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. That was amazing. Oh yeah. I mean, like, what is it with this character? And then uh, in in the latest Batman, uh, I can't think of her name now. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, uh, Princess Diaries. You know who I mean? Oh, I do. People um, are screaming at their at their iPods right now, like you idiot. Well, <laughs> anyway, she looked great in that. But I, there's something about that character. You know, they get the right attractive woman, and it's just like the greatest character. Yeah, they still. Um, what's the one from the original Batman? Oh, there were um, three. There was Eartha Kit. Eartha Kit. I and mean, people still Julie talk Newmar. about Eartha Kit, and it's been like 40 years. Yeah. And people but, still talk about that character. But she was perfect. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Very little. <laughs> Eric's little brother. Um, yeah, I was doing a female from the 60s, so that was pretty impressive. <laughs> Yeah, um, Julie oh Newmar was also a Catwoman. Yeah. I don't know. Are you drawing a blank on that? Which one? Julie Newmar. She was a Catwoman in the sixties. Oh, Batman. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, she was the one that he uh, Batman kept falling in love with. Right. Well, didn't he with all of them? I. It wasn't like. I don't. I didn't feel the vibe with any of the other ones. That he had with Julie Newmar, right. right? There was something about her with him that uh, yeah, like him and Eartha Kitt. There was a little double entendre, like you know, suggestibility. But he and Newmar were the only ones that they would kind of like hold each other's arms. They'd be almost just about to kiss, and then yeah, some flunky would you know shoot a, a an air gun or something. Some flunky and, like Do Re Mi or. Uh... Meow Mix, her two. I don't know what hers were. So we're going way off. Oh, the other one was Lee Merriweather. So that's three of them that played Catwoman. Uh, Lee Merriweather was Catwoman in the movie, which actually we just watched around here recently. Okay, uh, how far off of Marvel have we gone now? Now we're like obsessing about 60s Batman. Uh, we took a left turn probably introducing my life overview, and we haven't <laughs> even kind of got yours. Okay, why don't we do that? Um my name is Rob Southgate, and I am, well, boy, I guess at this point we just say that I'm a podcaster. I guess so. Because, I mean, I'm on multiple shows. Uh, Martha, my wife, and I own a network called Southgate Media Group, and uh, right now we're podcasting uh, a show called the Chester's Mill Podcast, which is about Under the Dome, which has two weeks left. So if you're uh. going to jump on, jump on. Uh, we're going to be doing The Killing and we're doing Hell on Wheels. And then Martha, Jack, this Jack, Jolly Jack, and I do Input Junkie. And those are all for, for that network. And then we have some more shows that I'm not going to announce them here, but in the next couple of months, we should have a whole bunch of new, interesting shows coming. And then I guess I'd call myself more of a producer than a podcaster. Well, it's got quite a network going there. Yeah. So everything else about me, I mean, you know, Martha and I have been married for 21 years. I hey. sound so much younger than I am, right? Uh, and we have a six-year-old daughter, and uh, she loves all this stuff, too, although she hasn't seen a lot of it. She's just has seen my uh, my pajama pants that have all the Marvel characters on it, so she knows them all. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I haven't shown her very much of it, although she saw a few minutes of Avengers and probably talked about it for three weeks straight. Uh, she saw a couple minutes of one of the Hulk movies and still to this day, if you bring it up, she starts talking about the scene that she saw and she saw a little bit of Spider-Man two, the Sam Raimi one. And she loved that little bit that she saw when he was stopping the, the elevated train yeah. and she's obsessing about, she still will. If you, if you bring it up, she obsesses about when he took his mask off cause it was burning up and they took his mask off and the guy goes, he's just a kid. 
<laughs> she it blew her mind. I'm like, really? That blows your mind. You don't even know the backstory yet. Because she's a little kid, too. Yeah, it's so awesome. So there you got quick and dirty uh, backstory on me. But uh, And I was doing uh, a couple other podcasts. I did Zero Hour with Martha. And I was also on the Falling Skies podcast. And I was supposed to do another Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast. But we have parted ways on that so that I could focus on this and Input Junkie and all these other projects that we've got going forward. So that's where we're at. All so right. now we've met the hosts. So, Jack, any uh, any takeaways? I know you've been watching the uh, previews. Is there anything that's like standing out for you about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I actually, believe it or not, I have not seen the previews, but I've been immersed. What? In, I have not seen any of the previews. Jack, not there's a this one. crazy thing. It's called the Internet. And <laughs> you can type it. It's, it's, it's this thing called Google. And you type in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you can see your previews. How do you spell Google? <laughs> uh, yeah. You giggle it. Now, actually, uh, the, what I've been doing is I went back to the original Strange Tales. Oh, and, sweet. The, the original, like the 60s Strange Tales. Yes, like the very first issues. Oh. Where he that's becomes. Awesome. You know, Nick Fury, agent of Shield, talked into heading the, you know, part one, the man for the job. Which, oh man, yeah. It's, so, it's, how far are you into the series? Uh, basically, I've uh, finished the. I think what's the pretty much the beginning is uh, Strange Tales numbers one thirty five to one fifty three. Okay. And Tales of Suspense number 78, which uh, goes back to Sergeant Fury. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Awesome. Where they're going kind of, it was a transition where they started out with Sergeant Fury. Right. And they didn't, they kind of were, didn't know what to do with him. He was transitioning. Uh, they wanted to make him a little more edgy. So all of a sudden, you know, he gets an eye patch and a little more kind of that uh, army, like, you know, 19, World War II, like 1940s kind of uh, uh, attitude. Okay. It, and um, so they, they kind of spiced him up quite a bit. So Sergeant Fury kind of evolved into Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And so I wanted to kind of get you know, you know, build on that to, you know, kind of go back to, that's to where, awesome. where, where the character is. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty good stuff. Pretty good. It, that's, that's like golden era stuff. That's really cool. Marvel. Uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting that you're doing that because I actually downloaded, uh, a bunch of the agents of shield and the, the strange tales so that I could do the same thing, but I haven't, I haven't gone back and read those. I, I read a few of them when I was younger, what I've been doing is working my way through the Marvel Now series, which is the one that was launched uh, a little over a year ago, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically all the Marvel titles. I'm, I'm not going to call them reboots, but they're they're kind of redefining the characters and the stories, I believe, so that it matches a little bit better with the uh, the movies and you know these phases of TV shows and movies and books that they're going to be doing going forward. So it gives you a little bit of insight, like like how the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are, it kind of ties in more to like what we saw in the Avengers. I'm, I'm uh, waiting, because I'm, I'm still at about week uh, six, and there's 41 weeks, so I'm working my way. Uh, and keep in mind, each one of these weeks, you're not talking two or three comics, you know, you're talking sometimes as much as like 12 or 13 books that you got to get through. Right. Uh, and... Uh, it's it's taking a little while, but I, I'm expecting to be done, caught up by about the time that this uh, series premieres, that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premieres. The other thing I've gone back and done is I've read some of the Ultimate series, which also is something they're drawing on for all the modern era Marvel stuff. It was where they kind of rebooted everything and said, here's like what we're going to draw on for Iron Man. Like There's the old story, but this is kind of... The, we're going to retcon this thing. This is it. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really interesting because uh, I know that... Now, I didn't see Iron Man 3 yet. By the time we talk next, I will have seen it. Uh, but I know that there were references in there to uh, things that happen in the Ultimate series. And I know that with Spider-Man, they're kind of looking at the Ultimate series as what they're they're doing with the Amazing Spider-Man series. So I know that there are different movie studios doing them, but how Marvel is playing this is all kind of tied back into Ultimates and Marvel now. So it's int- great that you're reading that old stuff because I really want to hear how that ties in. Well, it seems like... A lot of the gadgets, and it is gadget filled. It is the sci fi crime fighting. Well, yeah, it was kind of their response to James Bond, right? Absolutely. And they take it about as far as they possibly can with hovercrafts, and um, they have like these uh, wedge, uh, wedge rays where you can get about eight troops behind this giant horseshoe. Um, and it all seems to be powered by Tony Stark. Okay. So, oh, there, so in the old there should one it be is a too. huge relationship between, you know, if if they're doing Nick Fury and uh, any of that, but... Well, you mean in the show? In the show, if they the, tie it... Any, the show is the, about the Clark Gregg character, which is Agent Coulson. Right. So it's, I don't know if we're ever going to see Nick Fury. I, I hope we do. I hope we get, you know, even just like once a season, he's on it for five minutes. He walks in, yells at Agent Coulson, and goes out. That would be <laughs> awesome. Uh, but I think that we're going to hear, my, at least my, what I'm predicting, we're going to hear backstory about Nick Fury, but I don't think we're going to see him necessarily. Oh, that'd be a shame because it, that's one of the more colorful characters. But if you want to tie it into the movie, you have to go. You have to go with Coulson. Yeah. If you, well, and, if and that's just it. They brought Coulson back because that, that was that whole thing on the, the preview where, uh, come on, you had to have seen this, where the guy says, well, Agent Coulson, he died in the attack on New York. He says, you know, that that's common knowledge in, in level six. And Agent Coulson walks in and says, welcome to level seven. Ah. Yeah. He's not dead. Because that was the speculation for a while. Is this going to be prequel? Where he's not dead, is he going to be a robot? There are, uh, you know, tons of rumors out there. One of the rumors is that he's going to turn out to be the Vision, and that the Vision is making himself look like Coulson as part of he's part like it's going to lead into him being in the Avengers. Uh, well, yeah. that would be an interesting twist, or. Like uh, Dallas, the whole thing is a dream. <laughs> and at the very end of the season... Oh, would that be terrible? It'll be just a couple agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the shower looking at each other. <laughs> oh, I hope one of them is Colby Smulders. <laughs> <laughs> I really I was, don't want it to be like, I've... you know, <laughs> Thor and Iron Man. Like, that would just ruin the show for me. Why are they in the shower? Why are they having a dream sequence? It might be a good time to bring back Halle Berry in. <laughs> It's it's the DC crossover. <laughs> now I can get on board with that. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Yeah, I'm just trying to works. I'm just trying to get her into any movie I can. So, <laughs> so Jack, of the uh, Phase One Marvel movies, what have you seen? What haven't you seen? Uh, that's a good question. I've seen what started with Iron Man. Iron Man, seen it. Okay. Uh, two. One, two, and three. Okay, you saw all three. I haven't seen three yet. It is better than two. Okay, I like two. I'm if people are listening to this, looking for people that are going to bash these movies, you're in the wrong place because I actually enjoy movies. I can talk about them critically and tell you what I didn't like or what I did like. It's got to be really awful for me to say it's awful, like Catwoman was. Uh, but Iron Man two, I actually enjoyed. Mm-hmm. You know, is it perfect? No, but there's a lot of really cool stuff in it, and I can I can get behind that. Now you're saying Iron Man three was better. I've heard a lot of contradiction about that. Frankly, I see eight million uh, Iron Man outfits crashing down, attacking things. I see explosions. I'm in. There's no way it's not good. So well, I yeah. did enjoy it. It it definitely, you know, if you have to compare, but if you haven't seen three, you are definitely going to enjoy it. Yeah. I did. I liked, I enjoyed all of them, but if I had to pick, I'd have to pick one and three, but 
I saw it and I, you know, I took my wife and son to see it and we all enjoyed it. Uh, cool. Thor. Okay, you saw Thor. Saw did you it? like Thor? I did. Did I it leave you they, Thor? They did a uh, they did a, a real good job with that. The lo- the whole uh, bringing in Loki and you know just kind of wondering how they were gonna kind of finish that and if and you know how far would well, yeah, they actually take it? I was confused when when we first saw that there was going to be a Thor movie. My first reaction was like, sweet. And then I was like, how are they making a Thor movie? <laughs> You know, and I ended up thinking it was really cool. Oh yeah, the the whole alternate universe, and and I don't know how they got all that into one, one movie. Right, right. Well, and even like one of the one of the dorkiest things in the book, I, I shouldn't say it that way because I actually always thought it was cool. But when you look at it, you go, "This is dorky." Is the Rainbow Bridge? Hmm. But in the movie, it was awesome. They yeah. really made it, that whole thing really cool. I wanted more on Asgard. I wanted to see more of what was going on there because all we saw was a little bit in that kingdom. So they really did set you up because in uh, Thor The Dark World, there's a lot more that happens on Asgard and throughout that end of the universe. Right. So I think that's going to be really cool. It was very cool. And... and uh... Who was that? Uh, back to Iron Man three, uh, the the uh, the actor that did uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, the one who plays the Mandarin. Yeah. Oh my ben God, Kingsley. he was awesome. Ben Kingsley. Yeah, he's Ben Kingsley. Good. That's it. Yeah. See, that's the key with these. Even if you start picking the movies apart and saying, you know, oh, this was a little weak or I didn't like this, you got to admit they get the good actors. And if you've got good actors and you've got good directors, you've got top notch writers. You're you're hedging your bets. You're going to have a good brew, even if it's not great. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in there. Seeing Ben's King, Ben Kingsley play the Mandarin, I'm totally down with that. Oh my god, that was I didn't know what to make of it, but anytime he was on screen, it was just absolutely enjoyable, and it gets better as you get towards the end. It just it will blow your mind. If you haven't seen it, you have to, I mean, like tomorrow. Yeah, well, you know what? I've got it. I, I have it. I'm going to watch it uh, sometime in the next two days. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait. One well, plus, I'm a big Guy Pierce fan, and I know how important he is in this. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I actually know the spoiler. I'm not going to, we don't need to talk about it here. Uh, because a lot of people that are gearing up for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are probably going back and watching these things, for, maybe for the first time like I am. So we won't spoil what happens there until we get into the series more. But I know about Guy Pierce, and I, I know he's a huge character. I can't wait to see what he does in that. Uh, it, is, it is awesome. You will enjoy it. Oh, can't wait. Let's now, did you got... see... I mean, we, we can go back to all the other stuff, too, because... Frankly, for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., that's all going to tie into this that universe of Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, uh, Ant-Man is going to be done after Avengers 2, Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be in August of 2014. But on this show, I also want to touch on stuff like Spider-Man and X-Men. Those are two different universes that are all part of the Marvel Universe, but they're, they're different movie studios. So, you know, like Spider-Man, there's a whole world of things that kind of spin off there that they're not really tying in here. X-Men is its own thing. Fox owns that, and they kind of have a whole world going with that. Um, have you? Are you up to date on all that stuff? Uh, not really on the, the crossovers and, and who's got what. I mean, that's... Yeah, have you watched those movies? Like, have you seen... Did you make it to Wolverine? Yes. Okay. And you've seen both Wolverine movies? Uh, I, I, yes. I saw two of them. There's another one coming out, isn't there? No. The Wolverine. Well, that's the one that just came out. The one where he goes to Japan. I don't see that one. That was just out a month ago or so. No, I have not seen that. Okay, so you saw the first Wolverine movie, which is the Origin, uh, Marvel Origins or something like that. It's called X Men Origins: The Wolverine, and then the new movie is just called The Wolverine. So that's the one you haven't seen. And then there were the three X Men movies, uh, one, two, and three, and then X Men First Class. Right. 
And the new X-Men movie comes out in May, and that's Days of Future Past. I am jacked for that, too. Oh. That's going to be really sweet. You know, here's an interesting thing. Here's We'll talk about a crossover here. In Avengers 2, which is the Age of Ultron, oh, there was huge news this week. James Spader has been cast as Ultron, the bad guy in Avengers 2. Oh, cool. That's going to be really sweet. Um in Avengers 2, they've confirmed that the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are both characters in it. Uh, and there's also a rumor that the Falcon is going to be in it, and that eventually they'll spin off the Falcon into his own show, or his own, well, either show or movie. That's going to be cool, too. But the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are Magneto's children. I don't know how they're going to handle that, because Magneto and Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver would be part of the X-Men universe that Fox owns. Yet, they're going to be Avengers in the Avengers movie. Hmm. So that's I wonder some, that's if, some for the legal team apparently. Well, I wonder if they'll avoid the whole Magneto thing and just let them be characters and not address that until a future point when this you know kind of works itself out, or if they're going to make reference and we're going to start seeing that crossover because in the first Avengers movie they came very close to having uh, when they had Tony Stark's building, you were supposed to see Oscorp, which is Norman Osborn's building in the skyline and that would be a spider-man tie-in hmm. so you know are we going to start seeing that because sony was ready to play ball with that i wonder if fox is going to play ball i wonder if we're going to start seeing more of this because the more synergy these guys can get the better off they're going to be right if you attract one part of the the franchise it attracts a lot more attention to the others oh yeah i mean if you see Let's say you're, you see uh, Avengers, and they do the whole Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver thing, and they make reference to Magneto, and they talk about him even briefly. When that movie's over, the first thing you're going to want to do is see an X-Men movie. Like, right. oh, sweet, I got to see Magneto. That's how it works. You know, so I'm I'm hoping we start seeing some of that tie-in stuff. That would be cool. Yeah. So, you know what? Before we get too deep in here. I think we should cut this episode because this is really just supposed to be a meet the host. We're going to get into this thing. We'll start doing this show regularly starting when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. airs, which is September 24th. We'll start that week. So anybody listening, go on. We're going to put this up on iTunes. We're going to have it on Stitcher also. So if you listen at home, use iTunes. If you use, uh, if you listen in your car, on your mobile device, go to Stitcher. You can subscribe on either. Tell your friends about it. Start sharing. Like us on Facebook. We want to try and build some momentum around this. And we're not calling it Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's something different. We're calling it the Nuff Said Podcast. A little tribute to Stan the Man. And the reason we're doing that is we want it to be all things Marvel. We want this thing to keep going. I mean, I'm looking at the the, the list here just of the, the movies that are slated to come out. We go all the way in November, to uh, November of 2015. That's when Ant-Man comes out. I don't want us to be done when that's done. <laughs> and if we just went with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., well, if the show for some reason doesn't make it, then the podcast would be over, and that's not what we're about. That's, so, why, we're, that's why we're covering all Marvel topics. Right. And knowing us, we're going to cover all sorts of other things, too. <laughs> Oh, no, we did because... cover a little Catwoman today. Or, <laughs> we Jack, could... <laughs> at least I think you'd like to cover a little Catwoman. <laughs> well put. <laughs> yes. So uh, I, I, I'm going to say that's it, unless you have anything else you want to address. No, I, I think that's enough said. Oh, good one. So <laughs> that's it for the Nuff Said podcast. Uh, you can join us, like I said, on Facebook. Just join us at Nuff Said Podcast, N-U-F-F Said Podcast. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at R Southgate, and I'll tweet all about this and about our other shows there. Uh, eventually, we'll set up a, a Twitter account and a uh, an email account for Nuff Said itself. But for now, do everything through Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Uh, Jack, did you have a Twitter that you wanted to mention, or are you not really set up with that? Not really set up with that, but if we uh, if we get it rolling and everybody starts to join in, I will join in the fun. All right, sweet. I would say that is it then. Hey, true believers, thanks for hanging out with us, and we look forward to the future. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs>